Hey everyone, um, I've been asked so many times now about rainwater harvesting that I thought I would put a little video together to explain kind of the basics about how to harvest rain in our climate, <clears throat> specifically the cold climate. So I'm going to take you through a couple of components. I'm going to talk about talk about what works in our system, what I'd like to change, um, and basically the mechanics and how this whole rainwater harvesting system functions. So obviously the rain is coming from the roof um, and ideally our roof is going to be relatively clean, eaves troughs are going to be clean, but there's always going to be some debris and some aggregate that comes off of the roof as the roof itself is made out of an asphalt shingle. And yes, you can harvest rain in a potable fashion off of asphalt shingles. So just looking up here, you'll see that there is a device um, which we refer to as a flapper valve. Uh, here's a closer shot of it right here. This flapper valve basically allows you to uh, switch whether, where the flow is coming from. So we actually have a winter setting and we have a summer setting. So in the winter setting, the water is going to come down this eaves trough right here, or sorry, this downspout, and that's just going to feed into our swale in the food forest. In the summertime, um, the water is diverted into this leg right here, um, and so that will allow us to fill the rain tank for the summer months. And um, because we have a winter setting, we can drain the tank down and not have to worry about the tank freezing up. So the first device right here is called a rain head. And you can see that it uh, collects debris um, and it's trying to keep that debris, the organics, out of the rainwater itself. Um, this screen is actually removable so you can clean it. it. Just clips off. Okay, this device here is about 70 bucks. And it's sitting on top of another pipe which we call the first flush diverter. So the first flush diverter diverts the first flush of water off of the roof and prevents the water from getting, or that, that uh, dirty water from getting into the tank. In the first flush diverter, there's a little ball. And this little ball just sits in the tube and as the tube fills up with that first flush, it sits in a seat right here. So it prevents co-mingling of water, the dirty water, with the clean water that then goes down into the tank there. Now at the bottom of this first flush diverter, there's a little nipple and there's an o-ring with a hole in it. So while the rain event is going on, the water is actually coming out of this nipple, not at a very high rate, but just enough so that when the rain event stops, this ball will come back down to the bottom and reset. Now it's important that you clean this first flush diverter out on a regular basis. If that's not possible for you to do, then you probably shouldn't use one of these because it can make the water uh, more detrimental in inside of the tank because eventually if that hole at the bottom gets plugged up, you're going to have a tube full of anaerobic gunk. So now on the tank, we've got a couple other little things here. So we've got a nice tight fit into our tank so that mosquitoes can't get in and vermin. And we've also got a, a vent here, and we've got a screen on there also to prevent mosquitoes and vermin from coming in. And then, uh, because this is not actually a rain tank, there's a couple things that I don't like about these tanks. Um, the one thing that's good about them is that they're cheap. However, um, you know, they're clear, so they're going to let light through. So we have to clad this tank. We're probably going to clad it in some cedar fence boards. Um, and also they don't have the uh, fittings on here for overflow and for venting. So you have to do a bunch of modification to them yourself. So there's pros and cons. Plus they're only about a thousand liters and uh, we have a 1200 square foot bungalow and one half of the roof is going to roughly capture about 20,000 liters of water per year. Um, so you can see that they're not very large. We probably should have a three or 4,000 liter tank sitting right here. To retrofit this so that it has an overflow, what we did was we came down to the valve here, we put on a, uh, a coupling and then a T-piece and at the end of the T-piece we put in a bushing which has a three-quarter inch NPT um, thread in it so that we can thread in a hose bib. This hose bib then fit, um, feeds a small pump and the pump feeds a drip irrigation system under our cantilever where the soil is really dry. Um, the top part of the T then fills this two inch pipe and um, we set the elevation of this two inch pipe so that it would uh, allow the tank to drain once it gets beyond this level here. Now this is a really really important detail. 
On top of this overflow, we drilled a little hole. This hole here prevents the tank from automatically siphoning all out in one go. So it's a small, um, it's a, uh, the overflow doesn't come out all simultaneously because there's not a siphon here. The last little detail that you always have to think about with regards to rainwater harvesting is how are you going to manage the overflow. So you can see that overflow is actually going into a small weeping tile here. This weeping tile goes all the way through the food forest and feeds the bottom of our swale. And in our food forest, because we're working in a tight urban space, we've got our swale is actually the same as our trail. So our swales and our trails are one. And that's pretty much it. That's rainwater harvesting in a nutshell. Um, in the blog, I'll also p place what I call the anatomy of a rain tank. And there's a few more details that you want to think about when you're actually building a rainwater harvesting tank. Really quickly, um, one of those details is actually having an inlet that's quiet. So ideally what we want to do with that inlet flow is we want to split it so that when the water comes into the tank, it slows down. And then the other little detail that you want to think about is actually drawing the water slightly above the bottom of the tank so that it allows the anaerobic layer or the layer, any kind of the, the material that does get into the tank to settle out in the bottom. So those are two other little details that you want to think about. But check out the anatomy of a rain tank on the blog itself, vergepermaculture.ca, and that should give you all the details that you need to set up an amazing rainwater harvesting system.